doing justin here today we are checking out castle on the hill by ed sheeran all time classic pop hit this one really good fun one to play on guitar lots of kind of interesting things going on here with the rhythm and the chord changes and uh it's just yeah great fun to play so i'm going to take you through a few different approaches for this song we're going to start with the kind of chords that ed might use if he was playing it by himself on a radio show without loopers and stuff like that i'm going to show you a looper version as well or it's kind of it's again it's not exactly what ed played because it's a the studio version is uh uh, got quite a lot of layering going on there. I don't think it's the kind of thing that he'd be uh, cracking out the same uh, kind of version live. You know, it's one of the great things with Ed Sheeran and the way he plays is that he, he's changing his stuff up a lot and it should encourage you, hopefully, to try and find your own versions of his songs as you're learning to cover them as well, not just learning exactly what he did. However, there's always interesting things to learn by copying his stuff, which is what I'm hoping you'll get out of this lesson. So uh, the first thing that we want to talk about is the chords, really. So... Um, first chord is a D chord. We've got this little movement, very obvious in the kind of tune, is this movement from the F sharp to the G. Okay, so all I'm doing is going from my regular D chord, moving my first finger onto the second fret of the thicker string before I proceed to the uh, second finger in the third fret of the thicker string, which gives us our kind of G chord. Okay, so D. F sharp bass there. It should, I suppose, technically be a D with an F sharp bass, but you don't need to make that whole chord change. It's too fast. It's fine just to be thinking about that bass note. So D, F sharp bass to G. Now this is a B minor seven. So from our G chord, we've got our third finger still being held down on the third fret of the second string. From the G chord, we move our first finger onto the second fret of the fifth string. And the second finger on the second fret of the third string. So two, uh, nothing on the thickest, then second fret, open, second fret, third fret, muting the thinnest string. Okay, so just middle four strings, second, open, second, open. Okay, gives us a B minor seven chord. And from there, you just move first finger down one fret, so it's in the second fret of the fourth string. We end up with an A sus four chord. Okay, so D, F sharp bass to G. B minor 7, A, D, F sharp bass to G, B minor 7, A. Now hopefully some of you noticed there that the thing that's making the tune sound like the tune is the accent passage combined with the chords, okay? So I'm playing even eighth notes, so 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 all down picks okay but what really gives this song its own flavor is the order of the accents so one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four Okay, you can, it's a nice little movement there. We can 
sneak in a little bit later, I'll show you as well. But um, the big deal here is these accents. So the accent passage without the chords, we got the accent on beat two and the and after three and the and after four with the chords changing on the and after four. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay. I'm just hitting like the bass strings on every one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and then pushing through for the rest. So something again that you want to practice that up properly before you start adding the chords in. Because if you can't do the rhythm without the chords, adding the chords in is just going to make it even harder. Okay, so whenever you're struggling with an element of a tune, see if you can segregate it and work on it on its own. Um, that said, when you're learning a tune like this, there's no substitute to just listening to the original recording a bunch of times and getting it in your ears and trying to copy it that way. You know, um, you know, you might end up. I often find myself drifting from the original version, so I'll learn it properly, but then over the over time, it seems to change a little bit in my own head and then end up being something a little bit different. And that's okay too, because you end up with your own version of it, which is kind of fine as well. So um, don't be afraid if that happens to you. But it can be a good idea to learn the original recordings because there's usually elements that you might like to steal from. You know, I think that's a, a, a fairly big deal. So let me take you through that now again. So D. F sharp to G, B minor, A sus. If you want to be really clever, on the and after three, you can put little finger down on the fourth fret of the fifth string going into the D, but it's a little bit stretchy, probably a bit awkward for most people, and I'd. I'd I kind of add it in if I'm doing fancier versions, but I, I generally wouldn't use that. It does sound cool, but you don't feel like you have to. So, six years broke my legs. I was running from my older brother and his friends. Tasting the sweet perfume on the mountain. And then we're into the next section, G, A, D, and back to G. And again, G, A, A sus really, D, and then G, G to A. Two, three, four, and on the way. And then we're into the chorus. Um, so that little pre-chorus, uh, G, A, D, G twice and then G and A with a stop on it, okay? What you play rhythmically is up to you, but again, it can be quite nice to be able to uh, do a similar sort of thing with the accents or remove the accents and just start building it up a little bit because a pre-chorus normally is kind of the, the point of it, takes you from a fairly mellow verse and it builds it up, builds it up and then explodes into the chorus. That's kind of the, the idea of most pop arrangements in, in that kind of way. Um, and of course, we've got the little stop on the A, which is the little, they call it actually a pop stop. It's got a name in, in songwriting circles. So having that little lull before the chorus really helps uh, bounce the chorus up big time. So uh, don't forget to stop on the A chord. And again, listening to the original recording, no substitute for it. So the chords in the chorus are very, very similar to the verse, but what we really want to be going for here is an explosion of energy. So really trying to pick the rhythm up there. You probably don't want to be doing the same kind of... Uh, uh, heavy accent and little mutes thing, you want to be playing it all a little fuller uh, and just really trying to lift the energy up. Um, I normally play D, sus, before I move to the bass line as well. That seems to be the harmony that's suggested in the original song. So D, sus, four, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, one and two, sus, F sharp, G, also, I'm putting in more down up downs as well. So all of the way through the, the verse pattern is all down picks with accents. But if you want to, you can start in adding some up picks as well. <laughs> Having all of that little down, 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 up, down, up, down. Having that little down, up, down in there, again, just kind of picks the energy up for a tune like this. And I think that can be quite a fun thing to be starting to explore. Again, you don't have to, and there's lots of different ways that Ed plays it, so don't feel obliged. But, you know, these are the kind of things I think 
can be fun things to explore. Um, I should mention in the bridge as well, there's this slightly different chord sequence that comes in, which is the B minor, G, D, and A. Okay, so for a bar each, each chord again, but B minor, G, D, and A for the bridge. Again, listen to the bridge if you want to check out how that's uh, working. But the one thing, the last thing I wanted to show you uh, properly was the idea of using a looper. Um, and it sounds like in, to me that he's using a delay effect on the guitar at the beginning. It's probably done in the studio. Um, but you can kind of copy it quite well doing this. Which is, I'm just playing the third fret of the second string and the fifth fret of the uh, thinner string. And going down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up. One and two, E and a, one and two, E and up. Okay? Down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up. And if you wanted to, that can be quite a fun thing to add in as a loop. Okay, so uh, again. Check and see if it loops properly. Seems to be looping okay. I've almost certainly I'd be doing something like that, setting up a little loop of that pattern. Okay, that's a little bit slow. It needs to be quite up tempo that little bit, so don't be afraid to be uh, kind of pushing your limit there a little bit. Well, pushing your limit. You should be playing it at the at the tempo of the original track. Okay, that's probably the the speed that you want to be playing it at. But you probably, for me anyway, it feels faster to because it's so no. really feels like it's moving along you know it feels right on it it wants to be powering the song along that little loop so um, that's kind of what I mean by the feeling of it often the feel of these kind of things is is uh, it's not so quantifiable in in uh, you know in the count or the the music notation of it or the theory of it it's the feel of it and again it's listening to the original recording and trying to absorb that stuff uh, I know I keep talking about that sort of stuff but it's a really big deal it's a very important way that we learn the language of things so uh, that's a, just a fun little idea. Again, after I'd done the loop, a one bar loop, I was just playing the bass note. So D, F sharp, G, B, A, C sharp to D. You don't have to put the C sharp in. I just think it kind of sounds cool to have that little lead. It's a really fun little idea playing around with looper stuff. Like I say, if you do it on acoustic guitar, you do need uh, some kind of amplification uh, going on. I strongly recommend AER ampli amps, acoustic amplifiers if you happen to need to uh, buy an acoustic amp. They're not the cheapest ones, but they sound absolutely fantastic. So if you're looking in the market for getting yourself an acoustic amp, I'd go and check them out. Sorry for the plug for those guys, but they just make fantastic amps. Um, well, I think that's about it for this lesson. I hope that's given you a good framework for the tune and that you can explore your own different ways of playing the song. Love to see some of you doing covers of this tune. So if you do that, please leave a link to your video in the comments section. I'll check out as many of them as I can. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you dig what I do. There's more than a thousand free lessons over on justinguitar.com. So do go and check it out if you haven't already. I have loads more Ed Sheeran songs uh, from previous albums and off the new ones as well. So I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves and each other. Bye-bye.